who have suffered such tragedy, to the community around Grenfell Tower of all races and all faiths who have rallied to that community to support it and to demand justice, and to the firefighters who ran towards danger when politicians were turning their back. My, my union had members who lived in the tower, teachers who lived in the tower. They survived, but they lost dear friends and family. My members have been in the schools around the tower dealing with children who suffered such tragedies since then. And I tell you, we have to be part, all of us, of demanding that this never happens again. But we all know that if it's not going to happen again, we have to look deep in our society at what went wrong to let it happen this time. It's inexcusable that it happened, and we have to look deep to understand why it came about. Now, I'm originally from South Wales, a town called Pontypridd. It's eight miles down the valley from uh, Aberfan. And some of you may know about the tragedy that happened in Aberfan. Fifty years ago, I was nine. My dad had to take a workmate home from his factory. That man's two children had died in Aberfan when a coal tip slipped down the mountain, enveloping Pant Glass Primary School, killing more than a hundred children and their teachers. And I tell you, the similarities between Aberfan and Grenfell are striking to me. The people of Aberfan, like the people of Grenfell, knew that where they were living was dangerous. They were organising against that danger. They were saying to the authorities, it's dangerous, you have to do something about it. And the authorities ignored the people of Aberfan like they ignored the people of, Ab uh, of Grenfell. And they did it to save money. They did it because they didn't live in those places. They did it in Grenfell because they made a profit from it. We have to understand how deep uh, these problems in our society are. I tell you at Aberfan, the people there had to fight on for years afterwards. We've heard this morning the fights over Hills Hillsborough carried on. The fights at Aberfan had to carry on. They had to fight to get the other tips moved. They had to fight because the government took money from their relief fund to move the pits, to move the cult, those tips. But you know, they had to fight for prosecutions and they never came. Nobody, nobody was ever found guilty for ignoring the people of Aberfan. It's vital that justice is served. It's vital that the people who make decisions to make themselves more profit by using the cladding that they use, those people should face justice. The people who put on fire doors which didn't have the right security, those people should face justice. The people in Kensington and Chelsea Council who made decisions to go with those proposals because they wanted to save costs, those people should face justice. The people in this building, the people in this building who, de who deregulated, who cut the fire service, who, re who changed the rules about fire inspections, those people should face justice. We need justice in Aberdeen, we need justice in Grenfell. But I tell you what, the thing that turns your stomach most right now is the fact that they still are ignoring the people of the Grenfell Tower. That just like they ignored the people of Aberdeen for all those years, they haven't rehoused, they haven't taken steps, and then the yellow press tries to get us to turn against the firefighters. Never, never, those, those men and women who ran towards danger who ran into that fire, they deserve our utmost respect. Thank you to the firefighters. Thank you to the FPU. Thank you to the community of Grenfell. We stand united. Justice for Grenfell. And that means justice must be seen to be done. Fight on, fight on. We need housing, we need justice, we need prosecutions.